One of the most important things you can do for your application is to implement the right security measures. And what I've seen multiple times is that the misunderstanding of how to implement password and user authentication into an app correctly. With that, there's a bunch of different types of password algorithms you can use for password hashing. Recently, the best password hash that is recommended for modern applications is something called Argon 2ID plus Assault. And that's exactly Exactly what we're going to be covering in this video, how you can hash a user password with Argon 2ID plus Assault. And we'll be breaking down this video into three steps. One, what is password hashing and what is Assault? Two, what is Argon 2ID? And then three, we're going to be diving into some code so we can implement Argon 2ID for ourselves. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped thousands of developers learn and grow within their craft. Password hashing is a process that transforms a plain text password into a fixed length string of characters using cryptography. So for example, if you have a password that is like test one, two, three, four exclamation mark after being hashed, it would look something like this. And this is exactly what you would be saving in the database. And this is just an example. Hashing is only one way, meaning once the password is hashed, it cannot be reversed to retrieve the original password. This ensures that even if someone gains access to a stored password, they cannot directly use it since it does not match the original form. Salt is an additional random value, and in our case, we're gonna make it a static value, but it's hidden from the users, and then it's added to the password before it's hashed. Its primary purpose is to prevent attackers from using pre-stored data on tables. These are called rainbow tables to reverse engineer the password from its hash. Each password is combined with a unique salt then. Therefore, if your salt is like, this is a secret salt, Salt 8837 and your password is test1234, your password in Salt would look something like this. It'd be like test1234 and then your Salt. And then that would be hashed and no one knows the Salt. This ensures that even if two users have the same password, their hashed values will be completely different and that's because typically the Salt is unique. Argon 2ID is one of the three variants of Argon 2 password hashing algorithm, which is designed to be both secure and resilient to various types of attacks. Argon 2 won the password hashing competition, PHC, which I didn't even know was a thing until I started doing research on this in 2015, and is widely recognized as one of the most secure password hashing algorithms available today. So let's dive into code and see how we can implement Argon 2ID into your application. All right, so we're going to implement some of the best practices to secure password hashing in your project. So the very first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and install Argon, and we can do that by saying pip install Argon 2-CFFI. And that'll install all the dependencies you need to be able to use Argon. So now we can say from Argon to import password hasher. And now what we want to do is add a salt. Now a salt is something that you add to either like the beginning or the end of a password just to make it a little bit different from when you encrypt it. So we can say salt equals, and I just have a random string that we're gonna be appending to our password hash. And now we can say ph equals password hasher. And this is just the object that we are gonna be using to hash our password. So if we have a password that we call super secure password, no one will ever guess that. And now we want to add a password with a salt. So we can say like password with salt equals our salt plus our password. And now if we want to go ahead and hash our password, we can say hashed password equals ph, which is our password hasher dot, and we can just use hash, and we want to pass in password with salt. And now let's go see what it looks like. If we do that and we just run our application, we can see that our hash password is gonna say argon2id with a crazy password attached to it. And that is what our password is hashed when it's our password plus our salt. Now let's go ahead and try and like decode this, right? So if we said like try and an accept right here, we can say like an if statement and say like, hey, 
if our hashed password, where we hash it again, so if we said like ph dot hash, and we do the same exact thing where we pass in our password with salt, and we want to know if that equals our hashed password, this will not work. This just simply will not work. And that's because every single time you rehash it, it'll give you a brand new, like completely different hash. So if we want to hit in here and just say print password is valid. And then underneath we said password is not valid or invalid password. And we now reran the application. We're going to get but well, we're going to get password valid because it's running it at the same exact time. But typically, <laughs> that will not work. And that's only because we're running it in the same exact script. If we re-ran it again, um, it would not work. So if we, like, for example, grabbed this, and we can see it actually right here. The two hashes are completely different when we are running them simultaneously as separate. I mean, not simultaneously. When we run them as two separate scripts. We have this one, which ends in FU, <laughs> in SFU. And then we have this one that ends in AN slash M. So most of the time, this would not work. So what we need to do to make this work is we need to say dot verify. And we need to rely on our hashed password and we want to do our salt plus our regular password. This will work. And we have this right here, but we could also just pass in our password with a salt. And if we swapped that out, this is actually the way to make sure that everything is valid. We need to rely on this verify because each time this hashes, it will not print the same thing unless it is in the exact same file. Now, for example, we can go ahead and just check and see this live, like in a small fast API application. So let's go ahead and just say pip install fast API in Ubicorn. We're downloading all the dependencies that we need for fast API and Uvicorn to make this an API. We already have our salt. All we need to do now is say from fast API where we can import fast API and HTTP exception. And then we want to pass in our Pydantic and base model. We need to create a new fast API application. So we can say app equals fast API. We already have our salt on our password hasher. We're going to save these passwords in memory just because we're going to have a running application. So we can say hashed passwords, which is going to an empty dictionary. We want to create a Pydantic model, which is going to be our password request that we accept from our API endpoint. So we can just say class password request where we pass in our base model, username of type string and password of type string. And just to make it kind of easy to start, let's go ahead and just create a API endpoint of at app dot get get users where we're just going to have an async def get users, which returns all the hashed passwords. And then right under this, let's go ahead and create a hash password post request. So we can say at app dot post slash hash password where we say async def hash password, where we pass in a request of our new password request. Where we're going to say password with salt equals salt plus password hash password equals our hash password with salt. And then we can add this to our hashed passwords. And then we just want to be able to verify a um, password if a user passes it in. So we can say at app.post slash verify password async def verify password where we pass in a request a password request. And then we want to say user data equals our hash passwords dot get the request of our username. If there is no user data, well, then we just want to raise a small HTTP exception with a status code 404 and detail user not found.
And then we just want to store our hash to equal our user data hash. We then want to try and uh, verify the provided password with the stored hash by saying ph.verify our stored hash and our salt plus request password. And if it works, we can just return password as valid. And if not, we just want to throw another HTTP exception with a status code 401 with a detail in valid password. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. So we can just say ubicorn main colon app dash dash reload. That'll start up our application. Let's go into slash docs for our fast API application. If we're over here and we say we want to get the users, we can see that there is no users. If we want to hash a user, so we can say like this user is going to be YBOR222 and the password is going to be test1234 exclamation mark. If we execute that, we can see that we got a status 200. And if we rerun this, we can see that for this user, we get this hash, which is our salt plus our password hashed in argon 2 ID. Now, if we go ahead and we just grab this user, and we come down here and we say, try it out. If I pass this in and I purposely make the password incorrect and I say execute, we can see we get invalid password. And if I remove and make it accurate, we will also get invalid password. All right, let's see where we went wrong here. Oh, that's because right here in our pH verify, we forgot to pass in that salt. So now if we go ahead and we try it again, we're gonna have to rerun everything because it's just gonna, we just recreated everything so our users are gone. If we go ahead now, we say execute, we can see that it's removed. If we execute again, we have our user. And this time, if we pass in this information and we say execute, we can see that we get password is valid. But if we purposely make it incorrect, um, we get an invalid password. So that salt is super, super important to add right here in our verify. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to show in this video on how to use Argon2ID, which is the best password hash for applications right now. And I will see you in the next video.